Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens. Ask me almost anything. Today's topic is how do I write conflict? My name is Glenn Gers. I am Writing for Screens. Uh, I have created this channel in order to try to take some of the tools and skills and lessons that I had to teach myself in a 25-year career writing for TV and movies um, and, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just wondering whether I made this public or not. Hmm. Oh, there we are. Okay. You <laughs> Nobody was on. Hi, Nathan. It's great to see you too. Uh, anyway, I am Glenn Gers. I do writing for screens. I am taking uh, the things that I learned in a 25-year career writing for TV and movies um, and trying to condense them down to, to useful, small lessons which you can figure out whether or not they work for you. There is no single system. There is no right or wrong to creative art. You simply need to figure out what you are good at, what you want to do, what you can do, and then start to learn the tools and choices that will help you do that. That's all I can do for you, so that's what I'm doing here on this channel. This is a little screen grab of the channel main page. And if you look down at the bottom, you'll see a whole bunch of little thumbnails. Those thumbnails are for what I call the lesson videos. The first three playlists include about 50 10-minute lessons. The topics are the thumbnails, nice bright big words for you to choose. Yeah, you can talk about genre, you can find out what I have to say about flashbacks or dialogue or character. That is where this channel lives. That is the whole point. If you have anything you want to ask me, look there first. And truthfully, I would suggest you watch all of those over time, of course, because that's what I have to say. I took years <laughs> figuring that stuff out, months and months writing each one to make sure that it was as clear and correct as I could make it. So I beg you, that's where you want to go. That's what you want to do. Then I do these live streams every once in a while. I come on once a week, every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I take on a different topic. Today, it's about conflict and violence. Um, I will be getting into other things on other days. That's what we do here. So let me do some quick hellos because you guys are saying hello. Hi, Nathan. It's great to see you. Hello, Sonia and T. Trent and Helene. Fun flash forward. Excited to have you here. Mara Toledoso and <laughs> I'm Obi-Wan Glenobi. I like that one. Hello, Doreen. Okay, good. Let's get right to it. Oh, and this is Kitschy. People are just popping in. This is all great. Hi, Kitschy. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Let me let me get right into our topic, our story. The R Fung Hai, good to see you. Um, here's the deal. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, well, I'm going to do a little bit on this topic, and then we will open it up to uh, anything that want you guys in the chat want to ask. At the moment, though, let's talk about conflict. Um, Okay, let me tell you a little bit. Okay, first of all, it's, okay, um, at least for now, for the next 20 minutes or so, let's stick to this topic. Um, here's the deal. I got this message, this this little, um, among in the, in the course of an email, I got this, uh, I've been struggling with writing good conflict, and I was wondering if you could go over some tips. I looked in the playlist, but I didn't see a video on this. Maybe I missed it. You did not miss it. This is not on you. It's on me. Um, and I will talk about why. The, the truth is that um, Jesse J asked me this question. Um, and I, I've actually avoided this topic. Um, and so I wanted to ad admit that. Um, I've avoided this topic because uh, I think too much bad writing advice focuses on conflict. Um, and I've really tried to steer your focus away from conflict and towards dramatic action. I even did a whole excellent video on that called Dramatic Action. Um, 
because you'll hear a lot, especially old fashioned um, advice, but, e but even now, um, a lot of people will say, every scene has to have conflict. Drama is conflict. Um, and, and honestly, that's just not true. Um, every scene should not have conflict. That is insane. Um, if every scene has conflict, you're, you're, you will feel pummeled by the end of even a half hour. Um, scenes are much more complicated than that. What every scene does usually need to have, pretty much always, is dramatic action. And that is different. Dramatic action can be many, many things. I talk about it in that video. I will put a link to that video in the description after this is done. But um, in the meantime, let's talk about conflict. Conflict is a form, a type, a subcategory of action. Sometimes people are in conflict there. They are confronting each other, um, in, at odds with each other, but not always. Sometimes people are meeting, joining, uh, collaborating. Those are actions too. So, so it's really not right to say every scene should have conflict. It's just not so. Um, however, um, it is worth talking about because every story kind of does have conflict, I would say. There, there is, in, in a grand sense, in almost anything that you would define as a story, there is some form of conflict. Um, let me just do a couple of quick hellos. Hello, Atanu. Hello, Michael. Um, yes, this is my point. Uh, as Arfang has said, almost every screenwriting instructor in my university told me that conflict is the only thing that matters. I feel badly. I do not want to slam other teachers, but that is incorrect. Um, that is that is the that is the that ah, you know that's like saying speed is the only thing that matters in a race, and that is not true. Um, while it is true that you need speed, you also need stamina, you need control, you need judgment. There's all sorts of other things going into. You do need to understand the concept of conflict, but you do not need to say conflict is the only thing or conflict is the main thing that every scene has. That's just not true. Um, however, most stories, I would say, do have a, a conflict, a, a question, a, a, an issue has been raised. Um, in in uh, the one literary theory, and I've sort of adapted here, um, talks about it this way, um, says there are um, three types of conflict. Uh, some people say there's three types of plot or story. But the point is, you can have conflict between one character and another character, but you could also have char uh, conflict between a character and their world. Some people call that uh, man versus nature. The, the, this original theory of literature uh, it was man versus man, man versus uh, nature, and man versus himself. But A, man, seriously, let's, let's have people. Um, second of all, uh, it's not just nature, it's the world. Very often um, we, will have, we will have a story where someone is in conflict with the system in which they live or, or something like that. So, so therefore, I do think that that's another form of conflict. And then, of course, uh, a character struggling with a part of themselves or or struggling to change in some way and therefore that can be the conflict there can be no serious conflict with other people in a story in which you are conflicted against yourself um, and it can still be a really good story so i would say it is worthwhile to ask yourself what are the conflicts in my story not to bludgeon yourself with it saying every where who everyone should have conflict um but i do think it's worth figuring out what your conflict is, naming it, saying this is the story, this is the story of these two brothers who are fighting over their equivalents or so, you know, their uh, inheritance or something. Um, uh, the main thing is having named your conflict, having figured out what exactly your story is about or what exactly this character or relationship is about, then you start to ask questions because that's really where the work comes. Conflict is bad when it is uh, simple and unquestioned. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because, um, because in the original question from Jesse, he wrote, um, I'm struggling with writing good conflict. That made me think a lot, like good conflict, like there's, like there's bad conflict and good conflict. And it made me think about it because it, that is a legitimate thing to ask. What, what makes conflict bad or good in a story? So I would say the first thing to do is figure out what the conflict 
is. Like, is it going to be between, and, and this could be in a scene or in a story. Are there characters who are at odds, who have some form of, of difference that, that is coming out between them? Or is it somebody, you know, it could be somebody having to, to swim across a raging river. Um, or is it somebody having a struggle with some part of themselves or in trying to change themselves or something like that? So the question here becomes, why would that not always be good? And I can tell you if you look at many, many 1980s action movies, because they hyped up the conflict. And I, and I always notice this. You'll see certain action movies from the 90s and the 80s um, where like the, the cop comes into his uh, captain's office to get his assignment. And they're just yelling at each other. They're like, oh, don't be such a, you know, uh, free agent. And the other one's like, hey, I got to do it, you know. And, and the question is, why are they yelling? Why is there so much aggression? Why is there so much conflict uh, within every single scene of these movies? And the answer is, it just... It gets sickening. It gets tiring. You don't want to see everyone constantly butting heads. Um, so the answer is there can be bad conflict. Um, uh, the other things that I think uh, that that one, I believe, would be too constant, too the same. In other words, if every scene has the same type of conflict, if people are constantly being aggressive with each other or, or arguing, um, it gets it gets dull. It gets n nauseating. Um, but the other ways that conflict can go bad is when there's a conflict and nothing changes. There's no consequence to the conflict. If a con if if somebody's just being conflicty, <laughs> if someone's being aggressive or hostile or or arguing about something, and nothing happens because of that. You just you just feel like you've been in a bar late at night <laughs> where people are just yelling and and, and pushing. Um, and the other way the conflict can be bad is if it's just inappropriate to the tone or style of your story. For instance, if you're doing a story in which uh, like like you're doing you know a Jane Austen and and the conflict then would be rather witty and and indirect. Um, the, it may still be conflict. People may have disagreements. People may be trying to change each other, but you want the conflict not to necessarily be conflict. Um, so that's, that's just some, those are some things to think about. Um, let me just do a quick, couple of quick hellos. Hi, Donna Nelson. Hello, Randy Higgin. Um, hello, D. Um, I will get to your question in a second, Arfong. Um, the, the next thing to talk about about conflict is um, the means of conflict. Uh, this is what I got to about the about the the Jane Austen story. Um, for instance, um, <laughs> um, uh, the means of conflict. Like in some things, the conflict is a debate, a, a legal argument. Like uh, you get something like uh, you know a, a few good men, and and the conflict is until the end, people cleverly debating points. Um, it's it's actually a, a really good script and a fun movie. Um, by the end, the conflict has pushed to, but the form of conflict is legal discussion, um, which is very different from the form of conflict is in, in a superhero movie. Actually, most of the form of conflict is physical fighting. Um, and that's really one of the problems for me about superhero movies is I sort of get tired of everything being resolved by a fight, usually with some kind of sparks or rays or, or, or people smashing through walls. Um, at a certain point, that gets dull because all the people and all the res stories are being resolved the same way. So that's what you want to avoid is, is having the means of the conflict just be the same thing over and over again. It should change. It should develop. If, if uh, in, in A Few Good Men, the, the conflict is very often debate, but by the end, it's actual confrontation. Um, as we all know, because you can't handle the truth, um, the, the means of conf confrontation, um, if, if there's a, a very witty romantic comedy and suddenly someone just like impulsively goes to kiss another person, that would break the, the form of conflict. Um, and that's a good thing. It is good to not be too routine on any element of your script. Um, likewise, the style of the conflict, the means of conflict, the style of the conflict, it should reflect the world that these people are in and the nature of these characters. 
Um, so that's my main thing. Yes, um, uh, conflict is important. You really, it, you would be hard pressed to do a story with no conflict. However, conflict is not just fighting and yelling and attacking and insulting. That's my point. Um, <laughs> Marjorie tells her, why are you yelling? Because you're a loose cannon, hand over your badge. <laughs> That's, that is exactly right. Um, what do I think about the conflict in the Karate Kid? I think it's good. I mean, you know, there's, there's actually, se- this is a question. There's several layers of conflict because there's a, a layer of conflict between the kid and the bullies. Now, admittedly, I'm not... Most bully stories are, are, are rather simple-minded in that the bullies are operating purely as a device, like, oh, I'm a bully, I'm going to just be aggressive and not... And, and that's, that's really tiresome. However, um, the, uh, there's also a layer of conflict between the kid and the teacher. Um, that conflict is not done in attacks or insults. It is done in um, disagreements and forms of, of, of testing, However, there is a there is a definite arc of conflict in which the student and the teacher are at odds at first or during the course of their story and and learn from each other kind of thing. So uh, that's what I would say. Um, a conflict and dile- dilemma the same thing? No, not at all. Um, a dilemma is a question, a problem. A dilemma. I don't know if somebody has some screenwriting theory about dilemma, like it's a form of of storytelling. But the word dilemma means a, a, a choice, a problem, a question to be dealt with. Um, conflict is not that. Conflict may cause a dilemma, but it is not the same thing. Conflict is people being um, at odds, having a difference of, of needs or feelings or goals, and therefore needing to um, change or, um, or make the other person do something. That's what conflict is. Um, okay, so let me let me go back and just make sure I got all this. Yeah, the other yeah the the main thing is conflict should be driven by something and towards something. It should have a goal. In other words, if if characters are just you know um, uh, fighting because that's how they identify their character, like I'm a guy who who pushes people around, that's boring. Um, conflict should be driven by something. There should be something that they are trying to accomplish in the conflict. Um, so, okay, those those are my main thoughts on conflict. Let me let me. Uh, hi, Larry. Um, American Graffiti had conflicted characters. Yes, um, there, there were both conflicts between characters um, and also characters who were having conf- conflicts within themselves. In other words, asking, am I doing the right thing by going away to college or not? Am I doing the right thing by not going to college? Um, you know, uh, but then there's also the, a, a form of, con- romance is a form of conflict in the sense that um, a character wants to be romantic with another character and they are trying to get that character to be romantic with them and the other character may or may not want that. If they don't want that, then that would be a conflict. Um, uh, anyway, um, okay. Hello, Die One. Um, trial by combat is a thing. It is a form of conflict. It's just not the only one. Um, so let's talk about this other, um, yeah, fighting over, these are all forms of conflict or reasons for conflict. But, um, but they are not necessary for every story. Um, so let's talk about the next question, um, which is related to this one, which is um, somebody wrote about um, how do, essentially, how do I write, I feel uncomfortable writing about violence um, because I feel like, um, first of all, I, I feel badly about subjecting my characters to this, this violence. Um, and second, that I'm afraid that, that there is something wrong with adding violence and evil to the world, to the world of my story and to the world of the audience. And this is this is a legitimate question. Um, the actual phrasing of the question was this. I'd really like you to do an episode on violence, evil behavior, indifference, cruelty, and such. I find it hard to write this because as a person, I am so appalled by it, and I feel kind of guilty creating a universe like that through my writing. And the thing about this is that it's a truly legitimate 
moral question. This is, this is a big question, a big issue. Um, and one of the reasons is because at this point, we engage habitually with evil in our entertainment it's, it, and violence, conflict, violence. Um, these things show up almost so routinely that we're actually surprised when a story doesn't have them. <laughs> I often find myself watching a drama, you know, something, and I keep thinking, oh, they're going to attack each other. Um, just because I've seen so many stories where that's how people resolve conflict. In real life, ideally, we do this very, very, very rarely. Um, and um, so the question becomes, but in terms of storytelling entertainment, it tends to be exciting. It tends to be um, cathartic. It tends to be popular. And so therefore, over the generations, it has become more and more commonplace to the point that it feels almost required. And that is something we should ask a question about. Um, one of the things that, uh, that the question becomes then, does putting evil into art either um, actually inspire real world evil, or does it in some way taint the goodness to damage the goodness of the world these are these are really really legitimate questions um, and and there is no right or simple answer so one of the things i really want to say is the point here is to get you to ask yourself the question and not just in terms of what you think is true actually look around at what you see happening because the truth is i love violence in movies and i am uh, as the decades have gone by, more and more conscious that we have a rising, appear, apparently a rising level of violence in our lives. I do not know if that's actually empirically true. Like it's very possible that the Middle Ages were more violent. I don't know. I do know that the concept of becoming violent or aggressive um, seems almost um, taught in our storytelling? And that is a legitimate question. Um, the first thing I wanted to say, though, about um, this question would be, I feel guilty creating a universe through like that through my writing. Well, and you are creating a universe, and you should feel, raise the question. Here's the point, though. Do remember, it's just to imaginary people. In other words, the in telling stories, in creating art, um, narrative art, at least, it is very difficult to have everything be happy for everyone all the time. That is a potential art form. Uh, it is possible to tell a story where everything is beautiful and everything is good and everyone does well. And that might be a really cool form of art, um, but it's not the only one. Um, uh, let me just very briefly look at some comments. Um, uh, yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about Watchmen. Um, but but certainly Snyder is good at his violence. Um, although you know too much slow mo. Slow mo romanticizes violence, and I worry about that. Um, inner conflict and outer conflict and the interplay between the two. Uh, uh, let me get back to you on that. Hold on. Um, okay. Um, I had a difficult watching time watching The Accused. It won Jodie Foster an Oscar. Two separate things. Yes, it did. It was probably very difficult for her too. Um, uh, the fact that you have a difficult time for something can be the purpose of it, and that's a legitimate thing to do. Um, okay, so let's talk about this because actually Jodie Foster reminds me of two issues I wanted to raise about this question of portraying evil. One is the movie Taxi Driver, which is without question a meditation by the filmmakers on the appeal of violence and the repulsiveness of violence. Um, and, and Martin Scorsese is, is very, very conflicted over violence and therefore makes movies exploring that, um, I think often brilliantly. Um, Taxi Driver is, is a disturbing movie because of that. Um, it is about a person who is um, mentally ill, but also upset at the uh, corruption of his world as he sees it and um, and looking for a way to change it which he sees as needs to be violent um, 
the the thing about that that we have to so therefore what Scorsese tried to do was to portray this building violence in which you have a mixed feeling about it because you are in some way strangely drawn even in repulsion towards this man's inevitable um, violence and at the same time the outburst of violence is um, even even by today's standards I think still shocking the the power of the filmmaking of this violence is is intended to make the violence shocking um, now and, and I, I personally feel that is a legitimate thing to do. And we'll talk more about that. The question is, uh, a mentally ill man named John Hinckley saw the movie, became obsessed with it, and essentially tried to imitate it um, and, and shot President Reagan and several people standing nearby. Um, clearly, um, that was inspired by. The question becomes, is it the responsibility of the filmmakers? Um, I got to come down on no, um, uh, the, uh, that it is always possible that someone will take your work and misunderstand it. In other words, there was no way that, that Scorsese was coming down on people should be like Travis. That's simply not a, a possible interpretation of the movie, um, despite all the literally me's out there. Um, the, the issue becomes, um, did it in some way glorify or stimulate a person to do this? And the question of responsibility for me comes down to, would this person have not done it without that? And I tend to believe that, in other words, it's not like this person was just walking along, being an average Joe, saying, hey, I'm going to go get some coffee. And then all of a sudden he saw this movie and he's like, ah, I have to kill. That did not happen. Um, and and that does not happen. <laughs> OK, that just does not happen. Um, things may trigger in people stuff that um, that is already working within them. I do not believe we need to hold artists responsible for that. Um, I do think it's a good idea to rate and to even disclose, like there will be various things, you know, trigger warnings to that extent on movies in some form, not a bad thing. Um, but the other movie from the same period, I think it was within a year or two, that, that I always think about about this is Clockwork Orange. Um, spoilers for Clockwork Orange. Um, uh, Alex, the main character of Clockwork Orange, is a violent teen. He's a teen gang member. Um, he becomes um, a part of an experiment um, to, uh, to, well, he gets put in prison for his, his violence, which he w truly deserves. Um, while he's in prison, <laughs> and this is one of my favorite scenes in all of film and literature, while he's in prison, he becomes uh, the assistant to the chaplain in order to, uh, and spends a lot of time reading the Bible. <laughs> the reason he's reading the Bible is for the violence and rape and horrible acts in the Bible. And he uses that as fodder for his fantasies. It's an extraordinary sequence because it just shows that, that you can be triggered by many, many things, including well-intended or even possibly sent direct by God works of art. Um, so therefore, that's always my argument to the, to the uh, art is responsible. If people are looking or need to take a, 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 a bad version out of art, they will find it, <laughs> okay, um, in my opinion. Um, and, and I do not believe that, that there is no value to having dark things in art. Um, although it is, it is interesting to think, why not to do more art that's positive? Why not do more art where people act well? I have to say, Ted Lasso truly does, like, knocked everyone out, partly because we had simply forgotten such a thing was possible. And even at the end, like, spoilers for Ted Lasso, but minor, not really. Um, it seems at a certain point in the arc of the seasons of Ted Lasso that things are going to turn dark. And to me, what's fascinating is how relentlessly 
They refused my expectation of that brilliantly, um, magnificently, just really inspiring to see a commitment in a work of narrative art to demonstrating in an entertaining, lovable way, positive action. Um, that's just something to think about. It is possible and it can be popular. Um, um, but even then, you do have to show some bad things in order to have that person, the, the, the good actions, be in the context of bad actions. Um, as we all know, if you have no desire to do evil, <laughs> then in a sense you are not doing good. You are simply just following your nature and not even thinking about it. Uh, the, the important thing is to choose to do good. Um, but let's talk about the other reasons that, that portraying violence or evil could be worthwhile. Um, first of all, famously, catharsis, the Greek um, theory that we emotionally need to go through the experience of, of witnessing um, things which bring about in us fear, uh, awe, pity, uh, many, many emotions. Um, that's a legitimate story. I, I think that that can be, I don't think everything is about that, but I do believe that that is a legitimate use of narratives. Um, the other thing about uh, uh, violent stories is they can be sort of like a fight, flight simulator. In other words, we can decide to explore violence in a safe space of a video game or a movie or a comic book or a novel um, in order to perhaps um, ex uh, understand the consequences or to think about it or to see, you know, that that's all possible. Um, or even just to let out those feelings in a way that doesn't hurt anybody. That's a legitimate use. Um, but there's another possibility, which is that some stories um, uh, are, are trying to show you how bad a thing is. To say, this might seem like it will solve the problem, but it is actually truly horrendous. And I do believe one of the problems with our uh, entertainment in the in, in the optimized era since the 1980s, when people started to say, oh, if this sells well, let's do more of it and then do a purer version. So what's been happening is if something was popular, um, Hollywood then said, let's not just do that again, but let's do it in a more pure way. In other words, if slapstick is popular, something with more slapstick and less humanity would be even more popular. This turns out not to be true. However, fucking business, I apologize for my language, but they can't help themselves but say more, 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 more. Um, one of the values of doing this stuff is to show consequences, to show the suffering that is, is created by this um, action. Um, to, to, to show that the way people live is, is often bad and should not be emulated. That can be the reason to show those stories. I believe that that is um, a, a lot of... I believe that things like Taxi Driver and Clockwork Orange were intended both to create an escape valve, a catharsis, but also to condemn. Um, so those are, those are reasons why I think it is legitimate to show violence. Um, and, and by the way, there has not been, there is, there is no demonstrable uh, uh, cause and effect in more video violent, ga violent video games or more violence in, in books or movies or, or music um, causes violence. I do believe it normalizes, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, if you are showing violence with no consequences, if you are showing violence that's fun, you are normalizing, and that is not okay. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, but the main thing is, uh, to, to the original question, if you don't like doing it, don't do it. It's okay, you don't have to. Um, do beware, if you do do it, that you are not doing it just out of habit. Oh, all movies end with a showdown in which there's a fight. Therefore, I need a fight. Uh, think about that, ask yourself. Um, and worst of all, don't do it because you think it sells. That's just disgusting. Don't do that. <laughs> um, 
if you want to show violence and you want to show that you have mixed feelings about it, that it does seem like it would be awfully gratifying to just somebody drives by with their muffler off and the car really loud, it would be really satisfying to rocket launch them and blow up their car. But it would be bad. Um, and if you're going to show that in the movie, you should probably show that there are people who suffer because of it. And there are other people who then rocket launcher you for doing it. And and there's many, many reasons that, that violence is not the way to resolve issues. Okay, so with that, I end my thoughts on the topic. And now I will quickly go through a ton of comments. Okay. A struggle over a MacGuffin can be as thrilling as a fistfight and nobody needs to get hurt. This is a fact, and in, uh, it, it, but that would still be conflict. <laughs> the point is, that would be conflict, it would not be violence. Um, and uh, also, cool, yes, absolutely, as I said, dramatic action. People needing things and doing things for their reasons. Okay. I think people got bored with the movie doing the same violence and same violence. Yes, you would think so, but no. Um, <clears throat> yes, it is best to use real life issue to create deep sympathy for the audience. Yes, that is absolutely best in my opinion. The problem is that business runs in a habitual, shallow way. And the business of, of action movies has ground to, and the business of violence in movies has has become self-fulfilling. In other words, people say, look, that makes money. And also just there's a lot of stupid people, including in the entertainment industry, and they just don't think about things. They are very often getting out their own aggressions, and they're creepy, and, and we should condemn them. So I do. <laughs> um, for me, I hate the idea of making a movie just to show... Yes, the violence or special effects. Yes, that is, I, I, I do agree, although I do understand why it is done. It's just, it just essentially becomes violence porn. Um, and, and I think the definition of that would be something in which you are f um, fetishizing uh, or, or um, focusing on a single element to the exclusion of all else. Uh, yes, Schrader took a lot of, everybody took a lot of heat for Taxi Driver and still do. Um, yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, I remember the beef obscurity in the opening of the world. Yeah, that's, but that, that has to do partly with gangs. In other words, it was a movie about gangs and therefore they were afraid gangs would show up and that therefore gangs meeting would be violent. Um, there is a vast amount of violence in cartoons, also in, in fairy tales. Um, Violence is a part of human experience. It would be foolish to deny that. The question is, how do you deal with it? Not whether or not it should exist in art. My opinion. Hello, Bijan. Long time, yeah. Um, oh, cool. Go, I hope Thailand is beautiful and, and lovely. Um, okay. I'm, I'm very glad you are here. Good luck. Um, uh, I, I hope the strike is settled soon. It is not looking good. Um, yeah, uh, we we all have our opinions. Um, I did not. Uh, <laughs> yes, Asko, you did. And uh, I believe I was answering one of your guys talking about a question you asked. Um, Asko, you don't have to identify yourself. You don't want to. But was this you? I think it was. Um, anyway, um, but if it's not, that's OK. Uh, I am not saying it was Hasco. I'm just asking. Um, hello, Wolf Powers. Um, I personally think that the writing of Ted Lasso is is pretty pretty solid um, all the way through. Um, is the writer is it the writer's responsibility to present any moral or ethical arguments when using violence or aggressionism? Um, I don't know that it is a responsibility to present arguments. I believe it is your. I, I personally do believe it is your responsibility to consider the effect and meaning of what you write, and therefore to make choices so that therefore you may not have to have anyone debate violence, um, but but if you do, um, that's fine. If you don't, you still want to show, like if violence is simply fun and, and satisfying, you're making a moral choice. You are saying that I believe violence and aggression are fun and satisfying, and I'm going to tell people that. That is, by the way, a lie, <laughs> okay? It may be fun and satisfying for the person doing it at the moment if they succeed, but it is overall damaging to many, many people and things, and in the end often creates cycles of revenge, 
or cycles of oppression or other bad things. So therefore, there is an argument against violence. And if a portrayal of violence does not show that, you're just lying. You're just selling something because you want to sell it. Um, you may want to sell it because you need to, because you have a personal urge to, to feel good about your violent feelings. Or you may be selling it because, hey, people like this. They liked it when they did it in that movie. I need to do that too. That, I believe, is morally wrong. Uh, you know, there ain't no police for it. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm here talking about my kind of writing, the kind of writing I believe people should do. And in that, you should make sure. There's a movie called The Guns of Navarone. World War II, uh, 1960s, uh, World War II set, 1960s uh, war movie. Uh, it's, a, it's about a, 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 it's a great old war movie. There's this one scene at the end of the second act where the character played by David Niven objects to uh, some of the action that they have to take. And they have this little scene where they argue the morality of various types of murder during wartime. It's freaking brilliant. I, 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 I was like 10 when I saw it. It stuck with me and changed my life. Because in the midst of this movie, which was a fairly standard, entertaining war movie, they suddenly raised the stakes. They, they made these people so much more interesting. Um, you can sort of look at it, like David Niven's a good actor, and he might have just taken the part for anything, but I think he took that part, which is otherwise kind of boring, for that scene. Uh, Guns of Navarone, recommend it for that scene. Anyway, um, so that my, my answer is, I don't believe you are responsible to prevent to present arguments. I do believe you are responsible to present some form of truth um, or responsible to present things in a responsible way. For instance, if you show somebody um, drinking uh, alcohol, to the point that they drive unsafely, and you make that just comical and there's no consequences, you are, to a certain extent, being immoral. Now, here's the question. You get to something like super bad. Super bad portrays all sorts of bad behavior. Um, uh, very often people suffer because of it, but there is a, the, the thing is, there is a scene where the, one of the kids is with a couple of cops who just lose their minds. <laughs> They're bad. And, and I got to say, I believe that even though it's only implied, there is a criticism of those cops and their behavior that you begin to say, this is really funny, but that's bad. That's all you need, I, in my opinion. Okay. Um, Karn. Hi, Karn. I don't believe I've ever seen you. Channel has been helpful, so thank you. I have a question. Sorry if you already did. What are some making central character meaningful for the protagonist in between the side characters? Um, fair question. Um, I, I did kind of get into it. I would say that the real answer comes in, in, um, in once again, in, in my um, video on dramatic action. Because the point of conflict is that it is a type of action. In other words, someone is doing something for a reason and something changes. That's what makes conflict uh, meaningful and, um, and powerful. So that would be my answer. My answer is watch that, that video. I will put a link in about 10 minutes after this video is done. Come back, look at the description. Uh, you know, like the little words underneath the video, there will be a link that you can click to watch that video. Um, okay. <laughs> the series U is exactly what you're saying. I don't understand why Go Joe Goldberg killed more than 10 people in the series. Um, actually, now this is interesting because they've got a mixed, uh, a mixed demand here. U is actually interesting because I believe that there are consequences for Joe and that Joe is trying to face them or is being forced to face them. The problem is they're also trying to string out the series. <laughs> and so therefore, as it goes along, Joe is more and more, is, is constantly trying to change. Joe is, I, I got to give you this credit. You is a weird thing. I, not everyone will like you. It's about a serial killer told from the serial killer's point of view. Um, but what's interesting about it is that Joe is trying to change. And what happens is circumstances are constantly forcing him into more murders after a while. So um, that's an interesting thing. If it ends where I like, yeah, 
it will all depend on where it ends. I believe there's still a season to go. Um, but they do. It, the, there is a problem because in trying to entertain us by dra by by dragging out far beyond reason, um, the number of times that this particular serial killer could encounter other reasons why people have to be killed and other killers is insanely silly. But you know, it doesn't have to be real. It's 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 provocative of that question. Okay, I'm going to say we should start to slow down on the questions, um, only because I haven't gotten to them. There are actual studies that show the increase in violence after violent videograms. But uh, yeah, um, here's the question. Right, exactly. Correlation and causation. I, I actually do, once again, I do believe that violence in any form will um, loosen up the prohibition against violence. However, we have had violence since the beginning of storytelling, um, almost all stories, most folk tales, most folk songs are about violence. <laughs> um, many, many, many. Um, the Bible itself, very violent. Um, uh, almost all mythology, extremely violent. Um, and certainly all stories since then. So the question is, did that cause the violence or is that an exploration or reflection of human violence, the, na the nature in of humanity to have a, a side which is quick to anger or um, loses control? Um, what I do believe is um, that normalizing, showing violence without consequences or showing it repetitively um, does loosen up people's prohibitions against violence. And I do worry about that, and I do think we should work on that because we are seeing a, an increase in exposure. In other words, if you only saw, you know, like they used to have very, very violent plays back in the 1700s. Plays were bloody. Um, Shakespeare is often very bloody. Um, the question is, you only saw a play maybe once a month. <laughs> You know, it, now when it's every day or hours and hours a day, that may have an, an entirely different effect. And frankly, artists should consider that. Um, I wish they would. So the answer is yes. There are studies, and, and I would believe that. I would believe that anything, any form of anything shown over again, over again, normalizes, ex opens your um, brain to the acceptance. Um, <laughs> no problem. Cool. Um, yeah, and horror films, they, they should. Here, this is the problem. Like I said, we may be just experiencing too much art. <laughs> and I hate that to say that because I am a, a fan of having a lot of art. But at the same time, we may just have too much. Um, it may be better for us not to watch all day every day, as I tend to do. Um, uh, I'm not sure how to stop it. Uh, this goes along with capitalism and a lot of other things, in which I believe that there is a good version and a bad version. I believe we are plunging into the bad versions of a lot of these things. I do not believe it means wiping those things out, is my point. Okay. Um, yeah, horror films should. And, and, and there is a legitimate argument for the worth of horror films, that, that horror films can, um, can be cathartic, can, can, un, can help us tap into our greatest fears and and learn that they are survivable um, uh, they can they can allow us to work through questions and feelings that we may not be able to access without the extreme um, lots of things that make the horror films well worth there's reason that horror stories have always existed um, I you know I, I saw scream so long ago and I haven't watched any of the sequels so I, I can't really judge um, There's police for it. Yeah, that, yeah that's true. Um, also, there are requ many requirements about the moral conditions of the action in, in films in China. I am not entirely against that being raised as an issue. I am against having non-artists be in charge of deciding it. And frankly, that's why I'm not in favor of non-artists being in charge of deciding it in business as well as government. Um, hi, Doxy Loop. Um, Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, that's the thing. There is also funny violence. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, there is funny violence. There is tragic violence. Um, and they are legit. Like slapstick 
is funny violence. Okay, there's just you know there has been slapstick comedy since the or certainly in the entire history of movies, um, but I believe probably in the entire history of humanity. Um, it can be funny. It can be. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cartoons. That's what we're saying. That that there are there are is slapstick violence. There is. There is silly violence. Yeah, Walking Dead. There's a lot of things where it's like, that's fun. It is entertaining to see the craft and, and wit of the version of violence, um, to see the way that the artists have made a variation or a origi new original thing, or just performing it in such a way that is amusing or entertaining or satisfying. That does happen. You can't say it. You know, that's the... It, it is foolish to easily moralize, I believe. Um, you're welcome, Karn. Yeah, Karn, the, the thing about um, conflict, conflict is simply a form of action. That's the main thing I would emphasize. Um, okay, how about in a sitcom where there's a character is womanizer? Yeah, um, is it immoral? Once again, there is no morality. Uh, it is not a, like, yes, there are many, many forms of bad behavior. Um, it is not immoral to portray them. It may be immoral to glamorize them, to normalize them, um, or to accept them as um, uh, forgivable because they're funny. Lots of things like that. I believe you want to watch the morality of that. Um, but it's tricky because sometimes people want an escape. They want to feel okay doing bad things in their imagination. Um, and that is a legitimate human need. I do not want to say we should not do it. I do not believe that the world would be a safer place if there was no entertainment of bad behavior. Um, so, yeah, Zara is more about death and violence. As I got to say, Zardoz, I have not seen since 1970 what when it came out. I, I remember nothing about it except the secret of the word Zardoz, which I will not spoil. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, the Writing Life of Mitchell Ray Aiken. Hi, Mitchell Ray Aiken's Writing Life. Um, nice to meet you. Isn't it about context? Yes, in a certain sense, yes. Um, uh, I don't think that, that context is what makes the, the, them hitting each other with a hammer. I believe that what makes um, slapstick or, or certain forms of bad you know, violence that, that's entertaining is the there is a layer of knowledge where you say, I know this is not real. That's really important to remember. There is an element of play um, to our entertainment. That's why they call them plays. <laughs> um, and, and this is important to remember that play is important. I don't think it's a good idea to tell kids, don't play violence, don't play guns. Um, I do believe it's a good idea not to give kids authentic replicas of weapons because it's dangerous. Um, but I do not think that, uh, once again, if you were to take away every gun in the world from every kid, toy gun, they'll make a gun out of a stick. <laughs> um, the truth is human beings want to and need, legitimately need to play, to pretend to kill to pretend to be aggressive, to pretend to be wildly sexual. Lots of things where people do things as a release for the forbidden feelings. Um, this is a legitimate activity. It is probably wholesome. It is probably a good way to deal with these things. Um, and so I think one of the most important things is, is that there are works of art which which in style and many other ways, like the Evil Dead, like the Three Stooges, manage to signal to the audience, we are not being realistic here. We are playing. And when they play, yeah, somebody can hit somebody with a head with a, with a two by four and they go boing, ow. You know, that's okay. <laughs> Clearly, you cannot hit someone in the head with a two by four and have them go boing and ow. They're going to go, and they're going to fall down and they're going to need hospitalization. So, um, yeah, toy guns always, toy guns, toy dolls, there's uh, toys of all kinds. Play is, once again, it's a legitimate activity. 
And I do not want to suggest that you need to have everything have uh, a moral basis in which you are only showing good things or condemning bad things. That is not healthy. That would only create guilt and fear in the population, <laughs> okay? Because we have these feelings. We feel anger. We feel the desire to be violent or sexual or all these other things that are maybe morally considered wrong in public behavior, but they are legitimate, authentic feelings. And it is part of the use of art to explore, to allow, to, cons to, to, uh, to consider that these things are human. And I believe that that is a valid use of art. I just believe that people who are making art, and especially people who are selling art, should know what they're doing when they do that. Um, and that's it. If you know what you're doing when you do it, then you'll probably do it fairly well. Will Is it possible that people will not understand, that people will take it wrong, that people will manipulate it? Yes. Um, you cannot control that. You can just do the best you can and and try and work on the other things in the real world. Um, sorry, I don't know what's not human. Um, uh, do you think gun violence sh shooting came from a movie? No, um, I, I think that that once again the, the you know essentially we're just saying the same thing over and over again. Um, I believe that the glamorizing and um, and familiarizing with violence has loosened people's feeling of inhibition from doing them and that that is bad and that that is a responsibility. Um, I believe that that um, behavior is something that is important to consider. Like, honestly, there is a value to showing people not getting away with stuff in stories. <laughs> you know, there's a value. Like, you know, it may be that somebody watches something like you know, where uh, somebody does bad stuff and then they die at the end, like Scarface, and then say, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> yes, it is possible that. I believe that what we need to do then is change the conditions of life for the people who believe that it's worth it to go out in a blast of violence, because that is not caused by the movie. That movie is simply showing them an option in the face of their terrible reality. So that's what we need to do. Um, yeah, exactly. I We agree. Um, I'm sorry, Chez. Luckily, in just a few minutes, it will be available for, for watching at any time. Um, I got it. Yes, yeah, yeah, avoiding our need for land, avoiding the... Yeah, it's not human. Exactly. Um, and, and we all know how well prohibition works. <laughs> Very badly. Um, so there you go. What, what, it, what works better is A relieving the pressures on people in the real world, relieving the poverty, relieving the violence that they experience, relieving the unfairness, uh, uh, giving them education and terms and, and language in which to express their needs. These are things which would reduce violence a lot more than changing the art. That is my belief. And on that note, I am going to uh, close for today and begin running for office. Uh, in the meantime, though, go... Write something.